In this session, we're going to be looking at declarative programming paradigm. And hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll have the ability to solve a problem by writing appropriate facts and rules based on information that has been provided to you in the exam. You should also have an understanding of and the ability to write code that can satisfy a goal using facts and rules. And what does facts and rules mean? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But you already have some experience here when you started experimenting with SQL in the databases section. So this builds on that type of programming. The concept of declarative programming is normally used when we want to extract knowledge from existing data sets. SQL is a good example of this. And that's because it uses facts and rules. And facts are a thing that is known and rules are the relationships between the various facts. In SQL, you don't actually tell the compiler what to do step by step. You simply say, we want to find the first name and second name, which is in the student table, and where the class ID matches 7A, and when you bring back the results, output them by order of second name. Now, we don't specifically tell the compiler how to do this. We just simply define what we want, and the compiler or the programming language takes care of the rest. All we need is a mechanism to define queries. And because we know what the facts are, what's in there, and how these different objects relate to each other, what their relationship is, we can search for things and get answers. Now, for declarative programming languages to be effective, facts and rules have to be stated before queries can be constructed. For example, you can't really search for something if it doesn't exist or there's no relationship between different facts. Prolog is a language that uses predicate logic which basically is first order logic, which normally uses variables to define relationships, and we use that to write facts or rules. Predicate logic uses the following structure. Country, France. The variable is country, the data is France. Language, France, French, basically means in the language fact, there is a relationship between France and French. In the country, France, French is spoken. Now, there are some syntax rules associated with declarative programming languages. And for Prolog, which is the language that will be used in paper three, the following rules apply. Lowercase is used for rules and facts. So country is lowercase and France is lowercase. Each sentence ends with a full stop. Rules are defined by a colon dash followed by an indentation. And we'll look at that in a moment. Now, a set of facts are on the right. All of these things are fact. Fact could be a single data item or it could be multiple data items. And these can be queried to find information, which are often known as goals. An example of this is language, country, English. So we want to find out all the countries where English is spoken. Now, variables in queries use a capital letter to begin because this distinguishes them from the country fact. So if you look on the right hand side, there are a lot of countries and then there are a lot of different languages and then some countries speak French, some countries speak English, some German, some Japanese and some Italian. So for our queries results, even if you looked in that list, you will see that language country English means that English is spoken in New Zealand and England. The answer would come out as New Zealand and England. And the order is very important because New Zealand is first in the fact list compared to, and then England follows afterwards. Now let's get you to experiment with writing a query. So try to write a query to find which languages are spoken in Switzerland and in which country Japanese is spoken. The syntax rules are on screen. You might want to rewind it if you want to look at a completed query, but this one should be pretty straightforward. Pause the video, have a go, and when you're ready, continue. Well, hopefully you've managed to get the answers that language, country, Japanese was the answer to the second one. The first one would be language, Switzerland, and a variable with a capital L called language. Now, if you look at the data set on the right hand side, which has a lot of facts, you'll also see an example of a rule definition, which is towards the bottom of the screen. Remember the syntax, rules are defined by a colon dash followed by an indentation. 
that is something we've used to define a rule which is called savings rate and takes these two parameters or variables called name and rate and based on that it will work out what the savings rate is. So when we use the query savings rate Stefan x, the name is Stefan and x is the rate which we want. So when we run this query, the name is passed to the first line, bank account, name, type, amount. So we're going to use the first series of facts related to the bank account and we're going to match the name. So in this case, the second one, bank account Stefan, returns the type and amount back to the savings rate rule. So we get savings and 50. Now we use this information now in the next series of facts which is the next line interest rate type base. So we know the type from bank account which in this case is savings. So we're going to match savings and we're going to bring back the rate and the base. So savings there are two items interest 10% savings 5000 interest 5% savings 0. Now we're going to compare the amount that's in bank account which in this case is 50 is 50 greater than and equal to the base. The first base for the 10% is 5000 so 50 is not greater than equal to 5000. It doesn't match that particular fact but when you look at the second one 5% savings 0 50 is greater than zero. Therefore, the 5% rate will apply. So we return the rate 5% back to the user. Hopefully that made sense. On to task two. It's your turn to write a query to find out the interest rate for Layla's bank account. You need to write another query to find out who has savings accounts. And then for the third task, you need to set up a savings account for Robert with 300. This is a new fact. You then need to set up Another fact about savings accounts allowing for an interest rate of 7% if there's 2000 or more in a savings account. So we need to do a bank account and an interest fact. Do pause the video and have a go and when you're ready continue. The first query would be something in line with the savings rate one that you see on the bottom of the screen. you will probably call it interest rates. You'll pass the name which in this case would be Layla and you want the rate back and you'll follow the steps similarly. The second one will be a simple one, bank account, name, savings, and amount. And the name and amount would be in capitals. 3A will be bank account, Robert, savings, and 300. And the next fact will be interest, 7% in words, savings, and 2000.00. Now in the exam, sometimes you might get variable names which are X and Y, that's fine. Sometimes you'll be asked to write your own variable names. Remember, whenever you do that, the syntax rules apply. Variables will be in capitals if they're part of a query. If they're not, then you can keep them lowercase. Don't forget the full stop at the end of a fact, or the comma, or the colon and a dash in rules. These are easily forgotten and easy marks to lose. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what declarative languages are used for, predicate logic, finding the results of queries or querying existing data sets. You use predicate logic to create queries. There are some syntax rules that you need to follow, so make sure you memorize those. These aren't very tricky to handle as long as you get your head around the facts and rules. You should be okay with this particular part of the syllabus. That's all for me for today. If you do have questions, please do get back to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.